Okay, so if you could uh, read it out if possible, what was the question? X to the power 4. Uh, or... <laughs> right? Sorry. I can't do that. That's right. Oh, which one? Okay, oh, this one, right? Yeah, this one. Oh, so the... the, the third root. Third root? Yeah, third root from X to the power 4, so X. Okay. Power 4 over 3, whatever. Yeah. Like that. Exactly, yeah. Plus 5X9, X to the power 9. Yep. Divided by the square root of X to the power 3. Like so. Uh, yeah, uh, put the X out because brackets right. Okay, I see. So like this instead. Yeah. Okay, it's the same thing, yeah, so it doesn't actually matter, but yeah, it's how it's written. Sure, absolutely. Okay, so yeah, so whenever you see something like this, obviously if you take a root of a power, um, it doesn't matter what order you do it in, whether you take the root first, then the power, whether you take the power, then the root, it doesn't matter. Okay, so yeah, is the question differentiate this? Yeah? Okay. So, differentiating. Hmm. Okay. Have a look at it first of all. Is there anything that we can do with it to make our lives easier? So, well, okay. Just having a look at it, what are your thoughts? I think it's the best way to start. Uh, just get rid of the root. Okay, so how are we going to do that? You can write x to the power of 4 divided by 3. Good. So you're seeing that, you're seeing, huh, okay, I don't like the fact I've got cube roots going on. I'm going to write this as x to the power of 4 still but it's going to become, the root is going to become a third, so it's going to become 4 over 3. Does that make sense? And then obviously that stays the same, because that's fine. And the denominator becomes x to the power of... what? This root of it, uh, x cubed. Uh, 2 divided by 2. Good. Okay. Good. Now what? Good. Okay. So there are two ways you can go about this. You might look at this and say, hmm, this is a division of two functions, which it is, yeah. right? So you could jump in and use the quotient rule here. Yeah. That is fine, okay? Um, the other way that you could do it is recognize that actually all of these functions are similar. They're just x to the power of something. They were the basic ones that we started with when we first started dealing with differentiation, okay? So you could absolutely just spiddle around with using your laws of indices and simplify this as far as possible, then just use the power rule to differentiate, okay? So quotient rule is fine or power rule is fine. I'm gonna go power rule because I think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of fancying that after the last few examples. So realizing that both of these things are being divided by x to the power of three over two, remembering the fact that when you divide by something with the same base, so the x's divided by the x's, um, you can just subtract the powers, okay? So if you have x to the power of four over three divided by x to the power of three over two, well, that just becomes x to the power of 4 over 3 subtract 3 over 2. Really? Yep, if I write it out a little bit more detail like that. So x to the power of 4 yeah. over 3 divided by x to the power of 3 over 2 plus, let's take the 5 out so don't worry about that, 5 x to the power of 9 divided by x to the power of 3 over 2. It's still the same. Okay, so if I just subtract the powers here, 4 over 3 subtract 3 over 2. Um, I guess you can find a common denominator of 6. So that's going to become 8 minus uh, 9, yeah, thanks, over 6. So it's going to be negative a sixth. Is that right? Yeah. So this first one is going to become x to the power of negative 1 sixth. And the second one, well, I'll leave the 5, but let's think about what 9 subtract 3 over 2 is going to be. Well, okay, that's 9 over 1. So if it times that by 2, it's going to become 18 uh, minus 3 over 2, which is going to become 15 over 2. Okay, so that becomes 5x to the power of 15 over 2, right? And then from here, if I want to differentiate this, so I want to find f prime of x, differentiate it, just use the power rule. So bring the power down, reduce the power by 1, okay? So it's going to become negative 1 sixth, x to the power of, reduce it by 1. Minus 7 divided by 6. Good, well done. Plus, again, bring the power down, well, 15 times 5 divided by 2, 75 over 2? Yeah, 375. Yeah. yeah, that's right, it's the same thing, isn't it? Uh, x to the power of, and then reduce the power by 1. Well, that's just... Good. The only thing that I'm going to ask you to do is to leave it in the same form that you were given it in. So I didn't give you any fractional powers or any negative powers in the original thing. So in other words, convert it back, okay? 
So this is going to become negative 1 6. Just remember, x to the power of a negative becomes a 1 over. Yeah? So this will be times by 1 over x to the power of 7 over 6. Plus 25 over, sorry, that's 75. Don't worry, so it's 75. There you go. So that's going to be 75 over 2. And then that's going to become, well, okay, root of x to the power of 13. And then obviously this I can just rewrite as uh, 1 over 6. And then you've got the sixth root of x to the power of 7. And this is obviously still going to be 25, or 75, so I can write that 75 root x to the power of 13 if I want, all divided by 2. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so leave it in the same form that you were giving it in, right? Leaving it something like that would be fine. Obviously, like I say, you could look straight from here and say, huh, I'm going to use the quotient rule. That's also the same thing. Might be that you need to just fiddle around with this a little bit more to get it the same as that if you use the quotient rule, but it's still the same thing. Okay? So either way is fine.